Greetings and salutations, everybody. This is Emmett Watkins Jr., also known as EJSpun61 if I'm online or whatever. I am back once again with another rap review for Logic's latest album entitled Everybody. Now, um, let's talk about Logic for a minute himself. Uh, Logic, I've been a fan of for the last two years or so. Um, around the time Incredible True Story came out, I was starting to pick up on him. And um, Under Pressure, I went back and listened to. And um, overall, I like the guy's music. I like the guy's vibe on his tracks and just in person and everything. Um, he seems to be a genuine dude. Uh, you know, the whole peace, love, and positivity thing. I really appreciate that that message being pushed especially in rap um everyone likes to be a negative nancy in rap um or if not even a negative nancy everyone likes to paint you know not positive pictures of things that they see so i'm glad that he's you know pushing that that vibe in rap music and also you know the kid can rap you know his flow is his flow is very very tight very very good on his previous albums even bobby tarantino even though that was more of a trap type vibe i enjoyed that album or not even an album i guess that was more of a mixtape i enjoyed that project pretty well um there wasn't much substance there but it was still you know good to listen to uh logic knows what he's doing and the further he gets into his career he shows his rapping prowess more so um and he shows his you know production prowess more so he collaborates with a bunch of other producers and you know outright gets producers to work on his albums for him without him really having hands in but um it all combines to make some really really beautiful music and like i say it keeps getting better and this album is no exception everybody is a sonically it's a very great album but as far as the messages go it's a little conflicting um and that's what i'm going to talk about and you know how i do these things we're going to go track by track and then i'll like wrap it up with my overall thoughts at the end so first track is hallelujah um, he immediately hits you in the face with the religious vibes here, um, talking about, he actually ch challenges the whole image of God concept, because, you know, when people say, oh, I'm made in the image of God, um, some people might think of, oh, something like a perfect image is, you know, something prim and proper by our standards, when really the image of God is just meaning that, you know, God made you, so whatever you are was, so however you are, is what God in kind of intended you to be that's the assumption at least um and he challenges that you know when he's like major in the image of god would have blood my mouth and a bitch on the side um kind of portraying that more hood ghetto life not lifestyle but that that image of you know just being hood he portrays that as being something positive or at least being something that you shouldn't be ashamed of uh and i really like how he's challenging that kind of perception um and you know heavily heavily re religious vibes you know praise god hallelujah almighty the most high it's it's very in your face and he hits you right from the beginning with these themes on the album and plus you know his flow is pretty airtight on this as well um and the song rather it it begins the trend of really big grand instrumentals on this album you're gonna hear a lot of me you know complimenting the grand instrumentals on this um, and it also, towards the end of the track, it introduces the broader narrative of the album. You know, it has, uh, Adam, who's just a regular dude, gets hit by a car on the way walking from work, and he's put into, um, what is pretty much limbo, or just a waiting room, as he waits to be reincarnated. Um, and he is there with God, played by no other than Neil deGrasse Tyson. And it's a very interesting concept. Um, in this track, Hallelujah, they don't really get into it too deeply, but further on in the album, we'll talk about the concept more and how I think the concept's pretty interesting. Um, but this track leads us right into, um, Everybody, which is the title track. It was actually released as a single a couple weeks earlier. Um, Everybody is, it's introducing the theme of all inclusiveness on the album. Um, for you guys who don't know, Everybody is supposed to be an album about everybody. Um, he's trying to rap from different perspectives. He's trying to include different views in his music and trying to um, trying to appeal to different types of people with this album. Um, it's a very ambitious thing to do, but you know I commend him for going for it. Uh, so with this track, everybody, it 
final it gets to that all inclusiveness you know with the chorus saying everybody people everybody needs something he's addressing the fact he's addressing everybody's shared interest and everybody's shared desires here um kind of breaking down the barriers between uh between each other um and this is the first time logic as far as on his albums that i've heard he might have done this in mixtapes i haven't really gone back too far to be completely honest with you but this is the first time he addresses his biracialism um an incredible true story you do get a hint of it in city of stars where he says i didn't address the white versus black shit on my whole, whole first album but still black versus white bullshit was still the outcome um you get a little hint of it there but on his albums this is the first time where he's really like in your face like yo black dad white mom that's what's up um and this is going to be another some people have seen this as a criticism him going into his biracialism on this album uh because there are multiple tracks on this album talking about that topic rather than him having one big grand track where he just tears into it really really deeply um he kind of drops chunks of it not even drops chunks of it into different songs uh there have been many memes all over the internet about hi i'm Lo and then like logic just cuts you off and it's like yo i'm biracial like you know it kind of feels redundant to a lot of listeners i personally i'm not really bothered by it all that much so i i like how he's finally i i look at it less as a i i look at it less from a critical standpoint because i do understand that logic has been you know he's been feeling this plight for his whole life and he hasn't really spoke on it in his music until now so i see him you know the dude's damn near 30 so i gotta commend him for finally having something having a way to vent all those frustrations and he's putting it all into his music so of course it's going to be redundant because the man hasn't really talked about this in his music in all this time so I, I i give him more credit just because you know he's finally getting to express himself and even if that expression is a little bit even if it hits you over the head a little bit too much i think it's still pertinent i think it's still you know good for him for finally saying something I, it's clearly on his mind so i'm happy for him um and then i will say this song everybody it does sound like all right like everyone said it on the internet oh man it sounds like kendrick lamar's all right yeah the structure of it where it has those background like chants as the beat and then you know the the flow of logic is you know somewhat similar to kendrick's double time flow and everything and even the chorus where it like breaks back down and it's chill and then you know it's and then it's also like a positivity anthem like everybody people everybody needs something uh it's it's a great song it does share those similarities. I just want to call those out. I understand those similarities are there, but I don't think it's a copy-paste job. Like, people who are saying that, it's just not giving Logic enough credit, I feel. Um, but then, after everybody, which is admittedly a short track, by the way, we go on to Confess. Confess is has, like, a groovy gospel instrumental. Um, it's definitely... I I, I'm tr I was trying to put my finger on it. Um, there's like a piano sample in there a little bit that kind of reminds me of Madonna's Vogue. Um, kind of has like that strut down the runway, like piano sound. It's like dun, 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 dun. I'm rising up. I don't know. I, I don't know why. I don't know why that song came to my mind. But um, yeah, that's what I was thinking when I heard this. It's uh, confesses. It's about, you know, losing your faith in God um not necessarily you know outright it's it's less about losing your faith and more questioning faith in general um you know logic you know is talking about you know i know god don't give a damn about me and all these things but the overall instrumental is very uplifting hypes you up a whole lot even though his, the lyrics in his verses are very like oh man i'm downtrodden oh man everything's painful is god gonna help me with this but you know it makes you feel like the instrumental itself makes you feel like, you know, God's going to help you with this. It makes you feel hopeful, even though the words are completely going against that. And then you have th there's a Killer Mike feature on here, but Killer Mike doesn't even actually rap, which, you know, I wish he rapped because, you know, Killer Mike, he's a he kills mics. Uh, but I wish he rapped. But I do appreciate his um, kind of speech at the end or maybe just monologue at the end where um the whole concept of the album is logic's rapping from the perspective of uh an escaped uh convict who's escaped from prison he stumbles upon a church and he breaks into the church to pray at the altar and he is basically confessing all of his 
all of his sins, all of his concerns, all of his questions, everything to God in one desperate attempt to just try and figure out his life. And I really appreciate Killer Mike kind of bringing that character to life in at the end monologue there. Um, Killer Mike, almost in like a spoken word type way, um, which I'll get to in another track because Logic has a lot of these monologues in this album. Um, Killer Mike here addresses it in kind of a spoken word way where he's not necessarily rhyming every line and everything, but it, it just goes together. Um, it feels like poetry, despite the fact that, you know, not every line is going to rhyme here. And it, it's just a very beautiful end. It's one of those monologues where even though I like the song and I like Logic flow throughout the whole track, it's something I can definitely listen to all the way through um, because, you know, Killer Mike does fit with the beat of this he, he's not trying to flow on the beat he's not trying to rap here clearly he's just talking but the talking feels still relevant and it feels like the out the song wouldn't be the same if that little ending wasn't on there um i will be honest i do feel like it could have been a separate track especially with that instrumental cut for a good three or four seconds before killer mike does come in but i appreciate it nonetheless confess is a good track um, after Confess, we go on to Killing Spree, another shorter track similar to Everybody. And Killing Spree is basically talking about, you know, people's reliance on social media, always in their phones, you know, trying to find a meaning left through a cell phone screen, as Logic talks about. Um, I think this is a good topic to talk about. I think this is definitely something pertinent to the to culture right now. Um, Logic, you know, no exception to Logic too. He, you know, he does this. He's part of our generation too. Dude's like, what, maybe five years older than me, so he's not too far off. But I kind of wish he would push further into this. There's only one actual verse of rapping from Logic in this song. And I do love the singing in the second verse, but I wish he would lyrically go into this more without having another monologue i wish he would go into this more uh talk a little bit more about you know the psychosis um how being in our phones all the time would change our personalities change the way we live and all these things instead of well i do like the fact that you know he touched on a lot of political things taught on talked a little bit just a hint of like you know islamophobia and how people are you know they'll easily run with anything they see online uh but I just think he he definitely could have gone into it deeper. Um, the chorus, it does go hard, though, you know, as pussies, money, titties, weed. I forget how it goes. But um, I like how he's just, you know, it's kind of like a heart. Like, the first time you hear that, you're like, oh, shit, we're about to turn the fuck up when you hear that. And it gets you really excited, I got to admit. So the chorus on there and the beat is really hard, too, on this. Um, but like I said, more actual rapping. Um, and while I like the message, I just wish he had a little bit more to say. Um, but then that there's a gunshot at the end of the track, you know, for Killing Spree. And then it leads beautifully into the next track. The instrumental kind of just slowly, slowly amps up until you start the next track, which is Take It Back. Now, this beat right here is definitely the hardest beat on this album. Um, this beat has banger written all over it, and sure enough, you know, Logic doesn't waste any time. As soon as the track starts, um, there is a lead up to, you know, the track actually accelerating, but as soon as it, like, goes at full speed, Logic's, like, he's getting it rapid fire here. He's spitting bars, he's using his flow in interesting ways, he's doing good stuff. Even the chorus here, the chorus is one of those... It's one of those like deep choruses, you know, take it back to the first black man before they could paint a gun in the sand, you know, take it back to the first white man before he said, I'm gonna steal this land. It's very like, it makes you think definitely. Um, it doesn't make you think too much because it is the chorus. It's going to be something, you know, something more catchy rather than something more introspective or something more, you know, thoughtful, but it definitely catches your attention. And I could definitely see, despite that chorus being a little bit slightly heady, I could definitely see this song being a banger. Um, but then after he raps for, you know, maybe he has maybe one verse full of rapping. Um, he goes on to, and in the raps, you know, he talks about his biracialism and how, you know, people hate him on both sides for being black or being white. He then, after all this rapping, just kind of somewhat abruptly, not abruptly in a bad way, but it kind of just cuts in and then he just starts talking. Um, and this is another spoken word style um, track here where he's talking about, you know, his life. He basically starts when he was born around 1990. Um, and he talks about how his mom was racist. Even She was a white mom who had a mixed baby by a black man, yet she was still somehow racist. 
Um, it just talks about his struggle growing up. Talks about how he wasn't, he didn't feel accepted at home because mom would only see the black side and ridicule him for it. Didn't really feel that welcome at school because he'd try to hang out with the black kids and try and do things black kids did. But because of his fair skin, he was pushed out of that and would call the cracker and everything. And it kind of talks about these two fighting sides and how he's how he was had a struggle lifestyle, dude. This dude got kidnapped as a kid and stuff and like, you know, drugs, violence, gangs, all this type of shit in his household. And then, you know, leaves home at 17 years old, which I couldn't fucking imagine. And then, you know, gets two jobs supporting himself. And then in the little eight hour gap of time he has between two jobs, he works on music for half of that rather than sleeping just to get him to where he's at today. So this monologue, it's very, very, very powerful. Um, the first time I heard it, I was like, holy shit, this is just, I didn't know it was like that. Like, I knew Logic was, I knew Logic was biracial going into the album, and I knew, you know, he had a rough lifestyle, judging from uh, Under Pressure, you know, some of that stuff's gonna be from real life. But I didn't know it was like that for the kid, I'm like, holy shit. Um, and the spoken word here, the, the little spoken word section at the end, really does remind me of uh, Kanye West's Never Let Me Down. There's a part there where there's a spoken word verse near the end where it's very profound. Um, except, you know, of course, this one's going to be more specific to Logic, but he speaks with such passion. And there are certain sections where, even though he's just talking, he'll repeat certain phrases to kind of hammer home the importance of those words or phrases. Um, and it's very good. And then at the end of this whole spoken word verse, the beat just stops. And he's like, and I'm here to say, and it just cuts and he's like, well, you know, there's there are discrimination of all sorts on all sides there's extremes on all sides but you know just let people think what they want to think as long as they're not hurting or affecting anyone else who really cares like to stop killing each other you know something like i'd say some shit like that like it's not necessarily one targeted narrative but it's something you know it's obvious it's something clear something really that should be easy for society to do yet you know we fuck up at that every single day and then this call for, not call to action, but this this spewing, not spewing, um, this presentation of his opinion at the very end of the track leads pretty well into America. Um, you know, with the end of Take It Back, he's calling out the fact that, you know, there is inequality, even though we're all born equal, we're not all treat, get treated equally. And then America kind of goes into that lack of equal treatment. Um, this one is a banger. Um, also, a lyrical highlight of the album, I might add, um, not only does Logic bring it here, you know, you got features from Chuck D, you got features from Black Dot, um, you got Big Limbo and No ID on here, No ID rapping for the first time in like 20 years or something. It's kind of crazy. Um, I feel like this track is definitely going to be historic for Logic's career, not just the album. Um, but I like the album. It is definitely a banger. Um, it's definitely reminiscent of, you know, Tribe Called Quest, We The People. Um, even though this song that I'm about to mention is not political at all, the beat does give me a little bit of shades of uh, Kanye West fade. Um, it just the beat just goes hard, and you know he opens up the track with kind of the track's biggest inspiration, Public Enemy. You know, fight the power, fight the power, fight for the right to get up and say fuck white power. That's literally like a reference to Public Enemy. So you can clearly see where this track is going to right from the start. You know, Logic talks about. And then, you know, each of the verses from each of these featured rappers go into a different viewpoint of America. You know, Black Dot talking about, you know, the relationship to drug enforcement and, you know, uh, gun clubs and whatnot. And then you get Chuck, Chuck T, Chuck D, excuse me, um, talking about, you know, a more broader view of America. He's touching on a lot of different things, you know, talking about how Flint doesn't have clean water and, you know, talking about how alternative facts are still lying. You know, he's he's bouncing around a little bit more. And then after, you know, Black Dot has a verse and Chuck D has a verse, Logic comes back after having the first verse on here and has another verse in which he more or less just goes in at, well, of course he goes into Trump. He has a couple specific things targeted at Trump, but he goes in at Kanye West, which I was not expecting. The first time I heard that, I'm like, holy shit, this man's trying to... This man's trying to burn some shit down with his words. Like, I was concerned, but, you know, Logic's saying some real shit here. Um, you know, George Bush doesn't care about black people. That was Kanye West's words. And now that we have someone who's basically the sequel, as Logic has said, Kanye doesn't want to say anything about it. It seems very strange. You know, maybe it's related to, you know, Kanye's new income. He's in a different tax bracket now. Maybe he has different motives and priorities. 
maybe it's related to the family he's married into you know kim kardashian's his wife kardashians are like the elitist the most elite of the elite um or at least that's what's portrayed in the world so <clears throat> excuse me so maybe that's maybe there's something there um logic doesn't really go into much of that he more or less just calls out kanye for his lack of talking about the current climate so i thought that was really cool really aggressive from logic logic usually isn't this much usually usually isn't this aggressive on his tracks so i'm very i'm pretty pleased to see it i'm also pretty surprised to see it as well and you know and then you got big limbo at the end and no idea at the end kind of representing some other views you know kind of going into some atrocities committed towards native americans as well going into the perspective of just you know niggas on the hood who don't really care about the world because you know they really never had a chance to begin with so they don't see any of this really changing their perspective so i appreciate the different perspectives on this track and i think this one it's it's a go-to for me i listen to this one a lot on repeat so definitely a great track from logic and a very different track from logic it's it, it hits you in the face harder than pretty much any other logic track i've heard up to this point and then we go on to Inkblot right after America, and Inkblot is kind of, it's a very nice sounding track. I like the instrumental on it. Um, honestly, if I'm being honest with you, the instrumental does remind me of like an actual Inkblot. So I feel like this title is so perfect because just the instrumental is very, it's very spacey, very just like floating around and it's just there. And it's, it, it's not very, I won't say it's not very defined. That feels like a negative, but it's just not... It doesn't want you to keep it in a box, um, the beat on this one. So I really appreciate the beat there. I, I really can't put into words what I think about the beat, but it just reminds me of an ink blot. I don't know why. Um, it's, it just, it works. But um, on this track, Juicy J is featured. I wish Juicy J was used a little bit more prominently on the track. Juicy J doesn't come in to the track for like, until like the last half of the track. And then Juicy J just, he just trades bars with Logic for a little bit. Juicy J doesn't have his own verse or anything. I was kind of disappointed in that, though I will give Logic props here because I really like the fact that they use Juicy J, a hype rapper. You know, every time he gets on a song, they have like, yeah, ho, in the background on the instrumental because he's about to, you know, hype shit up and turn it up. But on this song, it's a very chill instrumental. So I was really surprised to hear Juicy J on this, and I thought, you know, they used him very well. He fit on this instrumental. But I just wish they used him more in that same way. Um, I like the execution. I don't necessarily agree with the amount he was on there. Um, and then, you know, Logic, of course, he's bringing the bars. They're trading back and forth, and even though he's singing for the first half of the song, which is fine, um, his bars on the second half are, you know, pretty decent. And then you have Juicy J's ad lib at the end of the track, which kind of contradicts later themes in the album you know when he's like kill your motherfucking self nigga it's like uh there's a song about suicide later in the track list but we're gonna get there later i just thought that was kind of strange and then you know the slob on the knob line at the end of the song was you know fucking classic fucking brilliant i loved hearing that i was like holy shit he said it so yeah they were right they actually said in the album you know they're gonna hear they're gonna hear this and be like oh fuck and i was like oh fuck when i heard it so yeah two kudos to them um, then again, that line is something that's only going to be so awesome the first time, uh, which is something I speak on a lot in this album. You know, some of these monologues are only going to hit so powerfully the first time. A lot of this is going to be first time listening. That's going to be good. Um, then we go on to the next track, Most Definitely. Um, now, I want to address something on this track because lyrically, the themes tackled in the music, you know, going into more political themes you know talking about welfare and you know income inequality and how you know the care the perspective that logic's rapping from which isn't himself uh this character has student loans and other things to fight and how he is a black person who's gotten out of college and has gotten their education and he's going to use that education to fight back against the system that is weighing down on him um these themes do blend in with the rest of the album but the instrumental here sounds distinctively not you know, it's not as epic sounding as a lot of these other instrumentals. Uh, America, just a hard in your face instrumental, Inkblot right before it, a very chill, but a very, it still feels epic in its tone. Um, Take It Back is a banger. Um, you know, all these instrumentals, even, you know, later on, we get Africarian, Black Spider Man. All these instrumentals are just like hitting you in the face, but then you get down to uh, most definitely, 
and it sounds like a more traditional Logic track. Um, it's not a bad track at all. Um, Logic does a lot of cool things with wordplay in this that I really appreciate. But it sounds like something that could have been on um, Under Pressure. Sounds like something that could have been on the cutting room floor of, uh, you know, True Story. Um, I really didn't... It Just instrumentally, it didn't feel like it fit with the rest of the album. Even though the themes on here are great. And then, you know, Black Positivity on fleek in this album um you know at the end of the album he's basically saying you know white black or not white people he's he basically says something along the lines of you know everybody's beautiful but right now at this time i need black people to stand up and fight for your life fight for your rights do all these things to ensure your own survival and success um so you know when i hear a line like that you know there's a lot of there's been kind of thoughts of people thinking that by Al by Logic naming this album Everybody and some of the themes he talks about on the album, that he's kind of taking an all lives matter standpoint to this thing. And be it's inherent when you stand on a platform of peace, love, and pos positivity, you're kind of already advocating for a Black Lives Matter viewpoint of things. But this track, and specifically that moment I talked about earlier, um, kind of addresses that fact, you know. He, he has love for everybody and, you know, he supports everybody. But at the end of the day, there is more inequality for black people, which is why he would speak on it specifically and most definitely. Um, similar to what he said in America, you know, he's, you know, how he says in America, you know, nobody's treated equally, especially the blacks. It's he's focusing on blacks in this album, which is, you know, not a new thing, not a controversial thing. But it's definitely, he's putting his foot in the sand, or he's drawing a line in the sand, putting his foot down <laughs> for, you know, saying and standing up for that purpose. So I I greatly appreciate that. Uh, so most definitely, good track. Um, kind of baffling track for the instrumental, but good track. And then that leads us on to the second skit in the album with Waiting Room. Now, Waiting Room is just going into the, the concept of God that he's painted and how Adam is just sitting there in the waiting room and then God explains, you know, how this whole thing works pretty much. How Adam is all of humanity in one person, meaning that every time Adam dies, he's sent into the future or the past or he's sent into a different life to live out the course of that life and then come back to this waiting room and do it all over again from a different perspective. And he's meant to do that forever until he lives every single life that's ever existed in the universe so that he can have the knowledge and the experience throughout all of them so that one day he can be as wise and as all-encompassing as the god that Neil deGrasse Tyson is voicing himself. Um, it's a pretty compelling concept, I gotta admit, because, you know, it seems that in our society, the, really the only true way to understand where someone is coming from and to s truly sympathize, understand, and point out, even point out the flaws in their ways of thinking is to live from their perspective and to see not how they see things, but why they see things. That seems to be the only true way to truly come together in unified understanding. So this concept, this idea of God, this idea of, you know, everything you've every action you've done throughout history every good thing you've done was to you every bad thing you've done was to you this seems like a compelling way to gain that higher knowledge to gain that you know that reaching a new wavelength of thinking um i think that was just a very compelling way of presenting this this world um and then that also low-key a cop-out because then you're not prescribing to any specific specific religion um, you know, you're not necessarily saying, ah, oh, Christianity's A1. You're not saying, ah, oh, Islam's A1. You're not saying Buddhism is A1. You just, you know, this concept I feel like is very, very, it's an all-inclusive concept of God, which I really appreciate. It kind of takes into account, you know, all of the world that is around you in the spiritual uh, aspect. So I think that was a really clever way of looking at it. So waiting room pretty not really a dope track it's not a track it's a skit but i like the premise that logic is presented there um and then we go on to the next track which is 1-800-273-8255 which is the suicide hotline prevention number um and this out and this 
track is really talking about suicide. Um, I actually saw an interview with Logic where he talks about, you know, when he's seen fans in the past and is, you know, eaten with eaten with fans and talked to them. A lot of them has told to him, hey, your music got me through, you know, wanting to kill myself and stuff. And so Logic figured, well, if you felt like that when I wasn't trying, imagine what I could do if I tried. And so here comes this track to kind of present that, uh, to present that push to try and, you know, make a change in someone's life. Um, and I think he was very successful in it. This track is very, it's very inspirational in its instrumental style. Um, it's, it's just, it makes you want to like put your lighters in the air and just wave them at a concert. It, it has that feel to it, even though the subject matter is very dark. You know, the first chorus on this album, one of the first things you hear is, I don't want to be alive. I just want to die. It's very, very dark, very, very gruesome. But Logic is able to turn it around by the end of the song to make you just want to stand up and cheer. Um, the character, you know, finally realizing they want to be alive while the operator is convincing them to, you know, pers- uh, to keep their life in the middle of it. Um, I think it's a very brilliant track, and it's one of the only examples on this album where he tackles the topic at hand through song completely and exclusively. Um, I think this is a much more effective means of providing these messages. Uh because in a lot of this album, he sits there and just talks for, you know, two, three minutes, which I think is great and which really hits you the first time or away. But if you're listening to music over and over again, it's going to be more effective to receive these messages through the music since that's what you're going to be consuming more regularly. That's how I feel. Um, but I love the track. Um, I loved all the singing on here. Um, Logic's rapping. You know, he didn't rap for all that much, but he, he didn't want to overcome the track. He wanted the track to have a certain vibe and a certain feel, so I think he nailed it on that track. And then we go on to the next track, which is Anxiety. It's about with a Z, not an X. Um, this track I thought was beautiful. Um, the, fr- the opening of this track with the kind of chanty background vocals and then the singing from uh, Lucy Rose, it's just so pretty. Like, the beginning of this track is one of the prettiest rap songs i've ever heard or prettiest rap intros i've ever heard it's just a beautiful sounding track um something about it just makes me float away when i hear it um and then you start to hear the more aggressive second half where logic comes in and he's actually rapping here um and he's going in in a similar way to how anxiety takes over your actual mind you know just when you think you're at peace and you think everything is fine just like the first half of the song talks about it in the singing portion you know, there comes the awful, intense, aggressive, epic feeling of anxiety, you know, making you think of all these bad things, all these crazy things in your mind, and it makes your body physically, you know, collapse and whatnot. And that sensation is what Logic talks about near the end of the track, where he's, you know, presenting this very specific situation where he was in line to go see Star Wars, and then anxiety just overwrought his mind, which meant his body was overwrought, woke up in the hospital, told him he had anxiety, and his whole journey of trying to figure out what that was and coming to terms with it. Um, The track, I really like the track as a whole, um, but once again, with the monologue at the end, it's going to be so impactful the first time you hear it. Uh, with repeat listens, you know, I, you know, I zone out every time I hear that. This track is so great that I love the track that, and I listen to the track a lot. But when I get to the monologue, I'm just more or less not paying attention. And, but I do appreciate the instrumental continues in the background and Lucy Rose's uh, singing in the background does continue. And then that goes on to, ooh, 33 minutes on this album review. And then this goes into Black Spider-Man. This is a single he released before the album as well. Um, This one is another, you know, positive banger, I'd say. Um, Very uplifting instrumental on this one. And Logic's words in here are pretty profound. Um, He does attempt to touch on a lot here, touching on homosexuality and um, being a black single mother and just... He touches on a lot of stuff, not necessarily even things that he has a specific perspective of himself, but he tries to touch on a lot of things. And I think by touching on all these things, he broadens the, he, he, he touches on something for everyone so that they can hear a line in the song and be like, oh man, that's me too. And then they just relate to the whole song and feel the themes of the whole song relate to them entirely. So I guess that's a cool tactic. It really didn't affect me that much, but I just thought it was like, eh, you really got to go for all that. But I feel like he, you know, more or less did it okay. Um, And then he speaks to his biracialism even more on this song. 
of course. Uh, but he uses one of, I think, was what's one of the most clever lines in the whole album. You know, the I'm just as black as my cousin Keisha. I'm just as white as that Mona Lisa. I'm biracial. So by Felicia plays black praise black jesus so called the preacher um i thought that line was like cold as shit the first time i heard that i was like holy shit that is a dope line um but lines are few and far between in this album you know he does go it's more about the message in this song rather than him delivering cold lines uh which is fine i appreciate the message in this song it's very very black positivity and all that stuff which is a continued theme for most definitely um and the singing here is great at the end. I just wish, you know, Logic does all his rapping right at the front. He raps for like two minutes straight. It's a really long verse. But then it's just singing the rest of it. So at, for as much as I love Dav- Damien Lamar Hudson singing on the end of this track, it felt like the song kind of just dragged on very long without much reason for it to drag on that long. Um, even though, you know, you wanted to have let Damien take the stage for a little bit. But I don't know. It just kind of felt weird. And then you have the ending skit at um, that kind of contradicts some of the messages of Black Spider-Man. Um, the whole concept of having a Black Spider-Man is kind of saying, hey, you have all these standards set through pop culture that are just by default white. And so all these things throughout history that are just default white. And so it's, it's bringing up a question, hey, why can't you have a black version of it? Why can't you have, you know, as he speaks on all these different, you know, races and stereotypes and different genders and stuff in the song you know why can't you have an asian spider-man why can't you have a gay spider-man why can't you have all these things he's bringing those into question but then with the ending skit um they're talking about oh man let's have a white superman let's have or let's have a black superman let's have a black uh, santa claus let's have a black uh, seinfeld and then when you hear that they're like huh it's black seinfeld nigga that's martin So it's kind of bringing into, it's kind of contrasting that. So it's kind of saying like, oh, you want all these versions of these things that already exist that appeal to you. Well, some of these things already exist, you know, even though it's not called Black Seinfeld specifically, Martin was a show about a lot of the same shit just from a black perspective. So those things can exist in a separate independent way that that could also serve the same function as, you know, a different sitcom or a different uh, music or a different uh, superhero already serve. Um, these things can exist without actually being these, you know, big household names. So I thought it was interesting that he was bringing that dichotomy into it. And then we go into the last track, Africarian. Um, very, very, very soulful instrumental on here. Um, definitely reminiscent of something like These Walls from Kendrick Lamar's uh, To Pippa Butterfly. I know the Kendrick comparisons, they never stop. But um, the soulful instrumental on here really got me digging this track. Um, even more introspective themes. While I don't think he's actually supposed to be spitting from his perspective, um, a lot of the stuff he's spitting about is relating back to him, his biracialness, um, how people perceive him, how people perceived his parents. He talks about, you know, uh, a mother not being left and how it relates to even his father you know his father black into the street with a fist to match um it ta- it touches on a lot of stuff and i really think this is a, probably the densest track on the album when you want to talk about lyrically and even from a wordplay perspective he does a lot of, he makes a lot of clever rhymes or clever in rhymes and stuff um it's just a very nice flow he has on this track uh the one thing i knock on him for the verses and the lyrical content he does repeat like He repeats these verses like a good two or three times throughout the track. Um, The track is 12 minutes long in total, even though not all of that is the soulful rapping dense part. About seven minutes of that is that. But um, he does repeat himself quite often, which is fine. By the time he he starts repeating himself, you're just caught up in the instrumental because all the instrumental kind of takes a while to build up. By that time, you're just turning up to the instrumental at that time. And so you're not really paying attention to the words. But... The words here are profound. I do appreciate the lyrical content of this. So um, it's very good. It ties into the narrative of the whole album. It ties into the biracial identity that he has that he's fighting with throughout the entire album. So I thought it was very great. Great ending to the album as far as the track goes. And then it ends with Neil deGrasse Tyson as God, um, basically giving advice to humanity. Advice that isn't, you know, he doesn't say one specific thing like just be nice to others or do something general. Um, he basically says, you know, live your life according to your own happiness. Like, forget everybody else. Um, it's kind of, you know, people have criticized that message uh, on social media once again. But, you know, I think 
I think it speaks to something I'm about to talk about <laughs> in a second. Um, real quick, I'll I'll address the fact that um, it does tie into uh, uh, the incredible true story, and by association, uh, what is it? Under pressure, his first album. Um, it is telling the story of Kai and Thomas once again, and they're in paradise. You know, just walking around as they were listening to the entirety of this Africarian album. So I think that was a clever way to tie everything back in right at the end when you think there's no relation. And so I like that. And then you get a surprise J. Cole verse right at the end of the album. Um, I was very surprised to see J. Cole had a verse on here. Um, and this verse actually does a pretty in a, similar to how um, the poem at the end of Mortal Man wrapped up all of To Pimp a Butterfly. J. Cole's verse here does a lot to wrap up all of this album, Everybody. Um, but it kind of does so by contradicting certain things. Um, if you think about the whole album was about black versus white and how logic should feel and how logic's treated and how that makes him feel about certain things. But this thing, this whole verse is basically like, yo, fuck the black and white shit. Like, who cares about what race you are? it's that's not really relevant it's about you know your impact on the world and you know it's it's less about getting caught up on these labels and more worrying about your your impact on the world and who you are as a person um it it was kind of interesting i liked how it canceled it how it canceled out other themes on the album because then i feel like it opens it up to interpretation a little bit more and then it it's not it's not as perfect def- as a message. It's not a perfectly defined message, which I appreciated, because um, at getting into talking about the album as a whole, um, ultimately I loved the uh, the album sonically and lyrically. I liked what he did with his flow. I like all the inst- pretty much all the instrumentals. I liked. They all went hard, even though most definitely stuck out as being different stylistically. I did enjoy the instrumental here. Um, the themes tackled here. Some of them I wish they went further, just like Killing Spree, I wish he went further into the cell phone thing. Um, and some people would argue that the the message here is kind of unfocused. Like, do you want us to just, is, is it, are you, pretty much it kind of somewhat boils down to, is it all lives matter or is it black lives matter? You have all these positive black messages, but then you're also talking about, yo, everybody has value. Everybody, everybody people, everybody bleed, everybody needs something. You know, you're talking about how everybody's worth something. So I can see how that be conflicting, but I like the fact that the message here is conflicting about how this message is not necessarily purely defined. Because from a from a personal standpoint, I feel like this album is something I would have made in response to, you know, to Pimp a Butterfly itself. You know, I referenced this album a lot during this review because I feel like this is kind of, in some ways, a reaction to if not just that album, the 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 wave in hip hop and in culture that you know that album brought upon, maybe not solely that album, but that album helped bring upon. Um, the climate is way more political. Um, everything is way more racial now. Um, when I heard Pimp a Butterfly for the first time, it changed my life, uh, and I started looking at things and you know reacting to things in a much different light. So I feel like I've always had. I've always had the opinion, similar to logic, that everyone's valuable, everyone's a person, you know, be nice to everybody. But these black, the atrocities specifically to blacks have popped up more prominently in my mind, not just due to the last couple of years, but if you go back into history, those things are just obvious. And those have been, those have been pointed out more often, more consistently in the last few years. So I feel like this album with its conflicted message reflects a lot of not just me, but what a lot of people of my age, of my generation are feeling. Um, And I feel like Logic was a pretty good one to tell this message because of the fact that he is black and white. He is biracial. He has gotten hate from both sides. He has gotten extremes from both sides, but he can still sit there and say that people on both sides have redeeming qualities and that they still have positives. I think it is unique that he is the one to bring this type of message. I think it's one that while people hate on it now and say that, you know, the whole biracial theme throughout the album is pretty, uh, it gets pretty old. I think that people are going to look back on this as something that is imperfect, but there's purpose in its imperfection. Um, it's something that I feel like is it's, it, it kind of holds up a mirror to a lot of this generation. 
Um, maybe it's just me feeling like I relate to the album personally so much, but I don't. I don't think this album is going to be considered a classic um, right now. I think it's going to take a long time, but I do think it's going to stand the test of time in that it's going to be an interesting. Um, it's going to be an interesting response to the current climate of America and of the world that we're in right now. I think people are going to look back on this and say, oh, it's conflicted, like how everybody felt during this. Um, you know, all the things happening in the White House and stuff like that. It's going to take a while before we all know what the fuck to do. And Logic clearly doesn't know what the fuck to do. He calls that out a lot in his uh, in this album itself. But um, I appreciate that he's trying to spread some positive message during and i appreciate that he's trying to say something even though he doesn't say it perfectly i appreciate the fact that he's trying to say something which is really all any of us can hope for in the world pretty much that's all we can hope for in life man and with that i end my review of everybody uh i've talked for a long ass time, almost as long as the Kendrick Lamar review. Hopefully these reviews don't end up being an hour long as a trend. But um I just really I I I like the album. I will say I really like the album. Um but I just, you know I feel like it it's so much more important than is currently being treated. Um we the album's been out for less than a week at the time of recording it, so I'm not gonna go ride or die for the album quite yet. But I just really appreciate the album. I appreciate the messages behind it. I appreciate this album so much more than I love the album, I, I think is what I'm trying to say. I appreciate it so much more than I... Like, I can't say I'm going to be listening to this album nonstop for the next week like I did for Kendrick's album. I listened to that for, like, weeks on, like, every day, constantly. I can't say I'm going to do that with this album, but I'm so glad this album exists. I'm so glad it's out there in the wild for people to react to, for people to get these messages. I'm so glad this album exists, so... That's basically how I'm going to wrap it up. All right. So thank you, everybody, for watching the review, for listening to the review. Um, as I said, I got other reviews on the channel. I got a Kendrick review. I got some Chance Rapper stuff. I got stuff from random albums of the last year or so. So go back and check those out. I will talk to you guys in the next video. And y'all have a swell day. Peace, love, and positivity to all, as your boy Logic would say. And goodbye. Adios.